All right, Shalom, Shalom. I want to start off saying all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekha Kudash. A double honor to the Apostle Elsbury Millstone, and Shalom, Lakasa, Laha Bakyar, which is a peace and mercy to the elect throughout the four corners, wherever it may be. I'm the brother Amar from the branch of GMS Cleveland, coming back at you with another video. Lord will this be edifying. And uh, this is going to be a video going into uh, who are the builders. Um, and who is the uh, chief cornerstone? All right, I think I might title it that. But um, anyway, um, you know, if you're a newcomer to the truth, uh, you might be reading uh, certain passages uh, from the scriptures. Uh, some some verses might not make sense. That's why scriptures talk about precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So you have to read something from this chapter or this book. And go uh, from this book and chapter to this particular verse, or it might be uh, this chapter and go from verse and jump down another couple of verses, or however it may be. But that's usually uh, how you read the scriptures. You go from precept to precept, all right? And you might go to the New Testament to get understanding from the Old and vice versa. Um, but anyway, uh, like I said, this is going to be going into uh, who are the builders. Uh, when you see builders are right, is written in the scriptures a few times but uh let me just get this real quick man um this is uh first peter 2 and 5 it says ye also as lively stones all right are built up a spiritual house man all right the lively stones is talking about the believers um in yahweh bashim shot in particular the men all right um and they're making up what the spiritual house man all right, this third temple, if you will. All right, and the holy priesthood, because uh, each uh, each brother will be likened unto a uh, stone. All right, this uh, make like I said, it's making up this spiritual uh, house. All right, um, it says in the holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices, and we're offering up spiritual sacrifices, man. All right, pursuant to Romans the twelfth chapter, and read those first couple of verses, because um, even uh, you know when you look at it. Uh, you know, from a carnal standpoint, uh, back then, um, you know, with the Levitical priesthood and so forth and so on, uh, we had to do a lot of what a uh, physical and uh, literal sacrifices with animals. Um, but now, a lot of our sacrifices are what spiritual. I mean, we're offering, up, we're offering our time or energy or you know, sleep, all type of things uh, that we're uh, offering up uh, to the Lord. Um, prayers and things of that nature. Um, so those will be likened to the spiritual sacrifice. It says um, to offer a spiritual sacrifices acceptable. Hey, even making these videos, that's another spiritual sacrifice. It says acceptable to Yahweh by Yahweh Shai Mashiach. It says wherefore also it is contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious. And he that believeth on him shall not be confounded, right? So now let's take a look into, you know, uh, what uh, uh, this chief cornerstone, uh, or, or, or the chief cornerstone uh, is, all right? Let's, let's get that out the way first. Um, let me see. Uh, and matter of fact, let me just keep on reading so I can knock out two birds with one stone. This is verse 7. It says, Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious. Notice it says, Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious. Those are what the, the true believers in Yahweh Bashim um, Yahweh that will uh, you know, hear this word and uh, and uh, and take heed and follow it, man. All right. Uh, the Lord said, uh, My sheep hear of my voice and follow me, man. You know, it says, um, it says, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone, which is Yahweh Shai. When you look at that word stone, all right, let me just show you so you can understand. Okay, so you can understand. Okay, look at that word. Uh, close to us. Scripture. All right, she corners. Right, look at the word stone. It's going to say G thirty thirty seven litho lithos. All right, it's going to say uh, a stone, a small stones, 
of small stones, of building stones, metaphor of Mashayak. All right, you got that? So that stone, same one as written in Daniel, the second chapter, that knocked down the statue. All right, this stone, all right, um, is talking about Yahweh Shai. All right, I just, I just read it to you. So going back to verse 7, unto you, therefore, which uh, believe he is precious, but unto them which be, will be disobedient, the non-believers, man, of our people. Uh, the two thirds, basically, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is the same is made the head of the corner. So that stone is talking about Yahweh Shai and those builders. The builders are basically talking about the non-believers that didn't want to accept, accept the Messiah when he came on the scene. And I got a scripture to prove that as well. But first, let me get a, a how do you know who's the chief cornerstone and uh uh knowing who the builders are uh because the lord matter of fact he said a a, a lot in, in verse six he said wherefore it also is contained in the scripture so i got a few precepts uh to pinpoint what what he's talking about and this more than likely is it has to be it right here um because when yahweh was on the scene there was no new testament it was just quoting uh so-called old testament the manuscripts Psalms 118, verse 22, the stone which the builders refuse is become the head stone of the, uh, of the corner, right? And this is what I'm pretty sure is King David, um, song, all right, because, you know, you have, you know, Asaph, and you have a few other ones, um, sometimes it's not always King David, but, um, going back to Psalms 118, verse 22, the stone, which is Yahweh Shai, which the builders, the non-believers that didn't want to accept the Messiah when he came on the scene, refused. It's the stone which the builders refused to become the headstone of the corner, right? They didn't. They didn't want to accept the Messiah for uh, for who he was when he came on the scene, even though they seen the miracles and things of that nature. So that's one of them, right? That's one precept, and I'm pretty sure uh, this ties into it as well. All right, it was Isaiah chapter. 8 verse 14 it says and he shall let's start 13 sanctify the lord of hosts himself and let him be your fear and let him be your dread and he shall be for a sanctuary uh, but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses of israel for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of jerusalem and many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken Right, and those are the ones that did not believe uh, when Yahweh Shai came on the scene. Like I said, they didn't believe that he was the Messiah. They they thought it was going to be uh, somebody else, or they, they just couldn't accept uh, him um, for for who or for who he was when he came on the scene. All right, so those are uh, two of them. All right, and then uh, that last one has to be uh, it has to be uh, you know this one as well. Um, see. Uh, yeah, Isaiah chapter uh, 28 and 16. Therefore, thus said, therefore, thus said the Lord, Yahweh, behold, I, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a, it's a, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste, man. Right, and this cornerstone. All right, this cheap cornerstone or this precious cornerstone, this or also known as the stone, is talking about Yahweh Shai. I just read to you in the blue letter. Let me look at the word stone. It's going to say a metaphor for Mashayak. All right, so that's the stone, right? So now let's uh, let's get uh, who the uh, builders are. Let me see. Uh, let's see if I'll try to grab this one real quick first and uh, see what makes more sense. Well, no, let me get this real quick, man. Let me get a... Uh... Yeah, let me get this, all right? Because this is going to prove a little bit more better on, uh, on who the builders were. I got to start it up, too, from here. Um, parable. 
Uh, Matthew 21, 33. Here another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it round about and did the wine press in it and built a tower and let it out to, to a husbandman. All right. And went into a far country for when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent he sent his servants, the husbandmen, that they might receive the fruits of it. And the husbandmen took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another, right? This is what the husbandmen did, right? Again, he sent uh, other uh, servants more than the first, and they did uh, and they did unto them likewise, right? It says, but last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, uh, they will they will reverence my son. All right. So the husband basically, you know, you know, if I'm not uh, uh, mistaken, you know, the husband will be likened to, uh, you know, basically uh, the builders. All right. That didn't that didn't want to uh, basically that was refusing, uh, you know, the, the servants, the ones that was, uh, you know, the, the believers. All right. And that's why it says, and the husbandman took his servants, the believers, and beat one and killed another and stoned them. And also we liken it to basically like the prophets, all right, because uh, they were known to kill, uh, you know, the, the, the servants, all right, the, uh, the prophets, all right, just the believers in general. It says, again, he sent another servant, he sent he sent other servants more than the first, and they did uh, and they did unto them likewise. But last of all, he sent unto them his son, which is talking about, this is a parable, we're talking about basically how shy, saying they will reverence my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, this is the heir, come, let us kill him, and let us seize on his inheritance, right? Like I said, the non-believers, man, basically you can liken them to the wicked Jews, wicked scribes, and wicked Pharisees. It says, uh, and they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard and slew him. When the Lord, therefore, of the vineyard cometh, uh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? And this is basically how shy posing the question. Verse 41, uh, they said to him, uh, he will miserably destroy those wicked men and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen. Which shall render uh, him the fruits of their seasons. Uh, Yahweh shall say unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures uh, the stone which the builders rejected? Like I said, and th those scriptures that I just read had, are, are the ones that Yahweh Shai is referring to. The Psalms 118, verse 22, the uh, uh, Isaiah uh, 8, verse 14 and 15, um, and uh, uh, what was the other one I got? I believe those two was the main points in the Psalms 118 and then uh, Isaiah 8. Oh, yeah, the Isaiah, probably the uh, 28th chapter as well. So I got that as well. It says the stone, which is Yahweh Shai, which the builders, the non believers, the ones that didn't believe uh, on the Messiah, rejected. The stone, which, uh, the stone which the builders rejected, they didn't want to accept the Messiah. The same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. All right. It says, therefore, I say unto you, the kingdom of Yahweh shall be taken from you and given to a nation, uh, bringeth forth the fruits thereof. Right. Uh, basically, uh, uh, for, uh, Isaiah at 13, I mean, Acts the 13th chapter, where it says, for lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Since the Jews didn't want to, uh, you know, uh, uh, didn't want to accept the Messiah, basically, they turned to what the, the Gentiles was talking about. Um, not the natural Gentiles, the Israelite foreigners, the ones that were willing to accept the Lord. Um, you know, they basically uh, turned to uh, to them, and um, you know that's what that's going into. Um, it says, "And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whosoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder." And when the chief priests and Pharisees uh, had heard this par his parables, they perceived that he spake of them. So that's the breakdown. I just went into. Uh, showing you uh, who the husbandmen were, all right. The, the forty, the forty uh, fifth verse broke broke it down. The the, the wicked the wicked priests and the wicked uh, Pharisees uh, perceived um, that uh, those par those parables were going to them, all right. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. So now you know um, who the builders are, all right. And you know who the uh, chief cornerstone is. So now when I go right here, 
this is uh, uh, Acts 4 and 10. Uh, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel uh, that by the name of Yahweh Shai Mashiach of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom Yahweh raised from the dead, even by him do this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone, and it's breaking down once again, too. It, if the blue letter wasn't enough, this is breaking down who and what the stone is. This is the stone which was set set at naught of you builders, <laughs> which has become the head of the corner, man. So, yeah, they broke down who the uh, stone was and who the builders was, man. So it's beautiful, man. Um, I think that pretty much brought home the point. Um, let me see. Got the one in Matthew, got the one in Acts, and so on. Um, I think I finished that out in uh, First Peter 2 uh, 7. I think I got all that. So, yes, yeah, so let, me, let me just bring that back now that you got all that. Uh, First Peter 2 verse 7 Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious. But unto them which uh, be disobedient, the stone which is the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Right, so Yahweh Shai, all right, became that stumbling block unto them. All right, that rock of offense. You know what I'm saying? Because they get they couldn't get past their old ways that they were stuck in. Oh, uh, you know, when the Lord came on the scene, they were so used. They was basically old, old bottles, so you can understand. They were used to doing things a particular way. And then uh, when Yahweh Shai came on the scene, that basically switched everything up. And, uh, you know, knowing that uh, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, uh, you know, basically put all things in his hand. All right. In his hands. It says, verse 9, it says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, man. So, yeah, that's um, pretty much the point, all right? Uh, you should, by now, by the end of this video, you should know who the builders are, and uh, you should know who the stone was. So uh, with that, I'm going to give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahushua, Ba'ashem, Rekha, Kodash. Don't mind us to the pastor, Ezra, Mr. on the shuttle wall.